Let me see. Go to my first answer. That one. Felix is the acting director of ICT. Can you respond to that? You speak loud, but they won't hear. One So can you can you do it? Yes, I can try to do it. You, you go near him and do it near him. As we as we get another, another person. question. From you sort yourselves now with that money. I'm due to radio one and radio talk about this. Um, IGP of late we've seen uh, gangs which are moving on with the machetes to different parts of the city. We are now shifting from Masaka and the urban area, rural areas to urban areas. And the KMP managed to make an operation where 21 suspects were admitted. Uh, but people are still having that fear. And whenever they see something happening, they think that these people have already come in. What steps are you taking to comfort members of the public after telling us that the situation is calm and normal as you usually tell us because we know that's police <laughs> language, but on the ground people are still threatening our country so that is. Well, I ask the members of the public 
keep you calm, but be more vigilant. Uh, be observant and always report to the police. We have come up with the strategies. Of course, this, this, this is urban terrorism. We have come up with the strategies to confront that week. And uh, of course, I'm not going to divide the strategies in the, in the, to the media, otherwise this man is going to to whisper, and for me, you are saying Kabozi. Kabozi means gossip. <laughs> <laughs> so we are going to gossip our strategies <laughs> to, to, the, to the enemy side, you know. But we are addressing it. And we are addressing it, the public should remain calm. Unless DIG has some small thing to add with that. No, one, it, it is very clear. One of the problems we had was, um, one of the problems we had was people not being able to communicate to police in time. And uh, the most important issue is vigilance. Because we can't be everywhere. So when people see any of them who is suspicious, they report to police. And that's why we are putting in place this arrangement. So that every person has a number of a nearby police station where you can call and be help. Number two, of course, there are the normal vigilance measures on our part. To increase patrols, to increase uh, standby troops. I also think you know that we have in place been deploying LDUs and uh, other enforcement. So I think with those few measures, we shall be able to with them. There is a recent incident that happened in Wakiso, I think you are aware. Uh, I was very impressed by the methods that were used by the people that were at home. Because when they started, when these uh, thugs came and started breaking, the people were attacked to enough to lock and move to another area and lock another door. So as they were breaking, they were buying time. And when police was informed, they came in and shot one of the thugs in the another one. And so you can see that vigilance can go a long way in collaboration with police. It can go a long way in eliminating this kind of threat. The issue of Nigeria, you remember they say that they are not able to make noise. But if they, are, if they had telephone lines of those people that were nearby, probably the response would have been faster. But still have been able to arrest them some of them, because also the vigilance of the people. And that's why we are concentrating on community policing. So when the, one of the people who participated went to seek for medical attention, and because of the vigilance also, the people alerted police. They said there is somebody here who looks suspicious. And from that lead alone, we were able to deal with them. So when they know that when they do something, they will be caught. They will also start with being uh, careful. So. This is what we are trying to build uh, and improving communication wherever so that we keep in touch and respond in time. That's it, sir. Yes, Mr. Tom, I think that's the last. So that we do hope. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I just want to find out uh, how you are dealing with the issue of confidentiality. Because uh, this is a question that. System because uh, in there, if people don't see that you are actually doing something in terms of investigation and follow up, uh, they are bound to, to slap and know that it is all the same. What are you doing in that regard to ensure that people keep up their antennas? Now, in, uh, in a week's time, a week or two, we have called the commanders countrywide. We are going to meet commanders countrywide, regional and district commanders. CID is also organizing for us to meet the regional and, and district investigating officers. 
with the view of having a joint review, a review of how we have been doing our things. We want to come up with strategies of how policy ought to be done. Now, confidentiality. Of course, we have always urged officers to handle, to know the category, to categorize the type of information given to them. We shall keep educating them and keep urging them to safeguard those who give us information. Because it is those who give us information that make us succeed in whatever we do. So, Mr. Mr. Malaba, you don't have those fears. They will be addressed very shortly. Director Fire, do you have anything on confidentiality? <laughs> the journalists may wish to hear your voice. <laughs> what about director research? This is an interactive session. That's why the directors are here. You can you ask. Maybe so the only thing I can say about confidentiality is uh, sometimes the officers may not be doing it deliberately. But you have to know how police does its work. You know, some, someone can volunteer information to police. That information becomes so vital that you use it as a lead. Uh, in investigation. Now, after some time, it requires that you should really record a statement from such a person. Now, once you have done it, or even if you omit to do it, but other pieces of evidence show that somebody gave this kind of information that led to that, and the file goes to the DPP, the DPP will still do it and find a missing lead. And they said, but there is somebody you are not telling us who volunteered this kind of information that led to the arrest of somebody for the cover of some property. So eventually you have to get there. When you record a statement, there will come a time if the case is fixed for hearing. You will have to call the person who gave the information as a witness. So I think members of the public sometimes wouldn't want that that I thought I gave information, now you are calling me in the court to face their chosen person. Sometimes they may, not, they may not want to do that. But of course there are situations where you can hide the identity of the person and still be safe with the investigation. But sometimes you may not avoid it. You have to call the person to come to court and testify. And that means you have, it is an open court, you have to face the, the, the criminal, and you have to be cross-examined. The, the, the suspect might even be having the defense lawyers and they will be cross-examining you. Sometimes it is not palatable. It happens even to people who are experts. There are cases where you find a doctor examines a victim of crime and at the end of the day you call the doctor to testify and it becomes difficult for that doctor to come. Is in most cases, our police doctors who know it is part of their work, they will bring the car. But the others will say, you see, and, and the system we, we inherited. Because if the, the, the doctor is from a government hospital, and the case is fixed for here, and that case is adjourned many times, you keep calling the doctor. He's a busy person in the hospital. You are calling, and the case is adjourned. You could be having a clinic and it takes almost the whole day in the court. So sometimes you find they are inconvenience in the process and they don't like that. Now, members of the fourth state, I would request you to emphasize for us the issue of vigilance. For example, today I got information, someone texted me. Uh, uh, now the confidentiality comes in, I uh, will also not disclose who this was and where the, the place was. He texts me saying, sir, whenever we have a market day, there are people who will lay traders 
in the evening and steal their money and goods. We have seen it all of them in the market today. Somewhere up country there. So that is the vigilance I want. We, we, I, I, I had to direct for police to go to that market and arrest them. They were arrested. So that's the vigilance. Yeah? That's the vigilance. Oh yes, the chief political commissar and we wind up. Is brought to you by